We are starting off with SmackDown as the Bloodline has been on the hunt for a fifth member to round out their War Games team. With Sami Zayn already joining the Usos and Roman Reigns, the group reached out to several stars, including Seth Rollins, Rey Mysterio, and Kofi Kingston, but all turned them down. Before a pivotal meeting with Reigns, Zayn hinted that he had one specific star in mind. During the segment, Zayn was seen speaking with L.A. Knight, hoping to recruit him. However, Knight declined the offer, leaving the team scrambling for their next move. The Usos and Zayn met with Reigns to discuss their options, and Jey Uso subtly suggested that Reigns make a call, though he didn't reveal the name of the star he had in mind. Shortly after, Solo Sokoa's Bloodline faction headed to the ring, followed by the OG Bloodline. What began as a four-on-four -four brawl escalated into chaos when Big Bronson Reed from Raw made a shocking appearance, tipping the scales in Solo's favor. Reed decimated the OG bloodline, even taking out Roman Reigns with a devastating tsunami, which hospitalized Braun Strowman, R-Truth, and most notably, Seth Rollins. Jacob Fatu was again a difference maker, but the combination of Reed and the Samoan Werewolf was too much for the OTC and the rest of the OG bloodline. To seal his allegiance, Reed threw up the iconic bloodline hand gesture, signaling his partnership with Solo Sokoa and the new bloodline. A very visibly pained Roman Reigns sat down at the back as SmackDown was going off the air. He then took out his phone and called the wise man. Unfortunately, he got an answer and it was not the one he was looking for. It said the number he was calling was no longer in service. It appears that Paul Heyman's number is no longer active. The very fact that Heyman was discussed on the show is an indication that WWE planted a seed for his return, but the big question is, whom will he side with? Do you think the powerhouse duo of Bronson Reed and Jacob Fatu will shift the balance in the upcoming Survivor Series War Games match? Share your thoughts in the comments below. For details on the OG Bloodline's fifth member, check out our November 18th Raw spoilers in last week's video, link in the description. SmackDown delivered an action-packed night as LA Knight issued an open challenge for his United States Championship. Santos Escobar stepped up to accept, but he didn't come alone as Electra Lopez, Angel, and Birdo accompanied him to the ring. Escobar cut a brief promo, but Knight dismissed him, expressing his preference to face Birdo instead. Before the match could begin, Birdo blindsided Knight, launching a pre-match assault. When the action resumed, Birdo was firmly in control, showcasing his high-flying, fast-paced offense. Despite their similar stature, Birdo's agile style contrasted sharply with Knight's more diverse, methodical approach. The two delivered an entertaining back-and-forth bout that highlighted their chemistry. Ultimately, Knight sealed the victory with his signature BFT to retain the title. While the match was solid, an extra few minutes could have elevated it to one of the week's best encounters. Post-match, the crowd erupted as Shinsuke Nakamura made a shocking return after seven months, attacking Knight and setting up what promises to be an intense feud for the US title. Fans will recall that Nakamura, drafted back to SmackDown earlier this year, had been absent from TV, appearing only in dark matches and live events during his hiatus. With Nakamura now targeting Knight, the United States Championship scene is heating up, a welcome change for a title that's lacked strong storylines since SummerSlam. Do you think it's time for Shinsuke Nakamura to reclaim championship gold, or should LA Knight continue his reign? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Now, Kevin Owens has been on a relentless and destructive path for some time now, as the former Universal Champion recently betrayed his friends Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton. After attacking Rhodes following Bad Blood, Owens took things further on SmackDown, decimating Orton with a brutal pile driver that left the legend seriously injured. On this week's SmackDown, Cody Rhodes called Owens out, but instead, SmackDown GM Nick Aldis made his way to the ring. Aldis explained that the situation with Owens was being addressed backstage and that Cody wouldn't be able to confront Owens until things were resolved. Cody Rhodes then said that Kevin Owens is not going to get the right message by being sent home. He said that Owens drives a Lamborghini, so he's not going to feel it in his pocketbook to miss a few weeks. Then Aldis said that Owens can't be there until this situation is resolved internally. Rhodes said if he can't handle things in a WWE ring, then he could fly to Kevin Owens' house and beat his ass front yard. During their exchange, Cody dropped an intriguing comment, calling Aldis a former wrestler before quickly correcting himself, saying that Aldis was still a wrestler. An interesting remark given the speculation that Aldis might return to the ring in the future. In the end, Cody made it clear that Owens wouldn't be held back for long and issued a stern warning to Aldis. Shortly after, Owens posted a lengthy video on social media expressing his frustration and tagging Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and others. Owens started off by saying, 
You know, it's getting harder and harder to do my job because I keep suffering consequences for things that are absolutely not my fault. The two-minute video, captioned Injustice, showed Owens sitting in his car outside the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee where SmackDown was taking place. Owens defended his actions, explaining that his attack on Orton was simply him doing his job after Orton repeatedly called for a fight. Owens argued that the violence that ensued was a direct result of Orton's insistence on facing him at Crown Jewel. I did exactly what Triple H tried to warn Randy Orton about, Owens stated. And last week, I did just what they asked me to do. Randy showed up, called me out, and I responded. Now I'm in trouble because I put Randy Orton on the shelf? That's nonsense. It's not fair. Owens also took aim at Aldis, criticizing him for siding with Cody Rhodes, who demanded that Owens appear on the November 22nd SmackDown to face him. Despite his frustration, Owens confirmed he would show up to the Salt Lake City episode, but made it clear that he was doing it on his own terms. Owens concluded by issuing a warning, saying, But everyone needs to remember one thing when I show up next Friday. I'm just doing what you all want me to do. I'm just doing my job. As the feud between Owens and Rhodes intensifies, it remains to be seen how their confrontation will unfold next week. How do you feel about WWE's booking of this feud so far? How emotionally invested are you in this rivalry? Share your thoughts in the comments below. While nothing is set in stone, a new report is sparking hope among Becky Lynch fans that the man may be making her return to WWE soon. The former women's world champion is scheduled for a rare public appearance this weekend at NYA East in Los Angeles, where she'll participate in a discussion. Event organizers note that Lynch will talk about her New York Times best-selling book, Becky Lynch, The Man, Not Your Average, Average Girl, along with highlights from her legendary career. While no promises have been made, there's a hint that Lynch might give fans a sneak peek at what's next for her in the world of wrestling. Mike Johnson of PW Insider reports that sources within both WWE and Netflix have indicated that Lynch is expected to return to the company by the time Raw premieres on Netflix, suggesting WWE and Lynch are nearing or have already confirmed a new agreement. Becky Lynch has been absent from WWE since May following a loss to Liv Morgan in a women's world title cage match. Her WWE contract expired over the summer, and she's been on a hiatus ever since. Previously, Fightful Select has also reported that WWE and Lynch have maintained a positive relationship and are expected to collaborate again when the right opportunity arises. Who would you like to see Becky Lynch face upon her return to WWE? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. The Women's United States Championship Tournament kicked off on SmackDown with the highly anticipated finals set to take place at WWE's Saturday Night's main event on December 14th. The tournament opens with an exciting triple threat match featuring Bayley, Candice LeRae, and B-Fab. The winner of this match will move on to face the victor of another thrilling showdown, Bianca Belair vs. Chelsea Green vs. Blair Davenport. On the opposite side of the bracket, Jade Cargill will battle Meechin and Piper Niven, with the winner advancing to meet whoever prevails in the triple threat clash between Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, and Electra Lopez. In the tournament's opening triple threat match, Bailey, B-Fab, and Candice LeRae faced off for a chance to progress to the semifinals. The match began with LeRae forcing Bailey out of the ring, giving her a chance to trade blows with B-Fab. WWE seemed to use the bout to highlight B-Fab, granting her significant in-ring time. While it was a valuable spotlight, her lack of experience occasionally showed. Bailey ultimately clinched the victory, pinning B-Fab with a roll-up to secure her spot in the next round. Despite a few missteps, the match delivered strong energy and plenty of enjoyable moments. Or from SmackDown as Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins challenge Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin for the Tag Team Championships. The bout kicked off with a thrilling, fast-paced exchange between Ford and Shelley, showcasing their incredible speed and agility. With the Street Profits recognized as one of WWE's premier tag teams and the Motor City Machine Guns hailed as one of the best in the business, it was no surprise that these two teams delivered a fantastic match. While the in-ring action was top-notch, the outcome felt predictable. Having only recently debuted in WWE and capturing the titles, the odds of MCMG dropping the belt so soon were slim. However, the ending took an unexpected turn. As the match reached its peak, Tommaso Ciampa stormed the ring and attacked the Street Profits, leading to a disqualification. Johnny Gargano appeared seemingly trying to defuse the situation, but Ciampa shoved him to the mat before walking away, leaving tensions high. Post-match MCMG attempted to apologize to the Street Profits, but Dawkins responded by decking Shelley, and he and Ford walked off in frustration. 
While DQ finishes are often unsatisfying, this one opened the door to intriguing storylines, setting the stage for future developments. How do you rate the booking of the tag team division thus far? Sound off in the comments below. The main event of this week's SmackDown featured Naomi challenging Nia Jax for the WWE Women's Championship. While Tiffany Stratton accompanied Jax to the arena, she chose not to join her at ringside. The match began with Naomi landing a dropkick, but Jax quickly overpowered her, driving her into the corner with forceful shoulder thrusts. The early minutes were dominated by Jax's raw power, but Naomi turned the tide with a high-impact suicide dive just as the show cut to a commercial break. During the break, chaos erupted backstage as Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez ambushed Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair, taking out the women's tag team champions in a surprise attack. Back in the ring, the action escalated when Tiffany Stratton ran down and blindsided Naomi, throwing her back into the ring for Jax to capitalize. However, Naomi fought back, kicking Stratton away and nearly securing the victory after reversing a top rope maneuver. The intensity increased when Bailey entered the fray, attacking Stratton as Naomi came close to another pinfall. The crowd erupted as Naomi hit a split-legged moonsault for a near fall, sending shockwaves throughout the arena. As Naomi climbed the ropes to seal the win, Candice LeRae appeared and attacked Bailey, causing a distraction. This gave Jax the opening she needed, delivering a devastating Samoa drop from the top rope, followed by her signature Annihilator to retain her title. The controversial ending highlighted the growing complexity and rivalry within the SmackDown women's division, leaving fans buzzing about the chaotic state of affairs. What's next for Naomi and the rest of the division? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Before tonight's SmackDown, WWE Speed's latest match was taped, resulting in a new champion being crowned. Dragon Lee, who recently earned the number one contender spot by defeating Akira Tozawa, took on Andrade for the title. In a thrilling contest taped prior to SmackDown, Dragon Lee emerged victorious, claiming the WWE Speed Championship and becoming the third ever champion in its history. The inaugural champion Ricochet won the title in April after defeating Johnny Gargano in the first ever tournament final. Ricochet later lost the title to Andrade in June. Although the match between Andrade and Dragon Lee is yet to air on Twitter, it has already been confirmed that Dragon Lee is the new WWE Speed Champion. In addition to this new title, Dragon Lee is also a former NXT North American Champion. In this week's post-Smackdown Dark match, the LWO duo of Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee challenged Finn Balor and JD McDonough for the World Tag Team Championship. The match saw interference from Carlito, prompting Braun Strowman to come out and even the odds. As a result, the title match transformed into a six-man tag team contest. Braun Strowman, Dragon Lee, and Rey Mysterio ultimately defeated the Judgment Day, with Carlito being the one pinned. After the match, Dragon Lee took an apple and shoved it into Carlito's trunks, delivering a humiliating moment for the former Intercontinental Champion. While dark matches often see the babyfaces triumph in dramatic fashion, this moment was a crowd pleaser, especially after the earlier heartbreak of Naomi's loss to Nia Jax on SmackDown, despite interference. It's clear that not everything is going smoothly for the Judgment Day, and tensions are building within the faction. Now Vince McMahon has officially stepped down from all his roles at TKO, including his positions as executive chairman and board member, following serious allegations from a lawsuit filed by former WWE employee Janelle Grant. While McMahon has strongly denied the accusations, the situation has significantly altered his role with the company. Despite his resignation, McMahon remains financially tied to TKO, as according to an SEC 13G filing, he retains 8,021,405 shares as of September 30th, 2024, representing 9.88% of the company's Class A stock. The filing was required due to his stake exceeding the 5% ownership threshold that mandates public disclosure. However, McMahon's influence is now strictly symbolic as he no longer holds voting rights in the company. In a recent interview, TKO COO Mark Shapiro shared that he had breakfast with McMahon, noting that while McMahon's presence is still felt, his days of wielding power within TKO are over. Shapiro emphasized, McMahon's role in TKO is done. However, Vince McMahon isn't fading into obscurity. Reports indicate that he's already planning his next venture, a new entertainment hub company. This project is expected to focus on funding and producing both fictional and non-fictional film and television content, steering clear of wrestling. Rather than creating a WWE 2.0, McMahon's latest endeavor aims to broaden its focus and spotlight a diverse range of entertainment projects. 
In NXT news, the November 12th episode of NXT featured an intriguing segment involving Sean Spears and Brooks Jensen, who appeared at a restaurant where Tony D'Angelo was dining. During their encounter, Spears voiced his concerns about the North American Championship, noting parallels to situations he had witnessed in the past. He cautioned Tony, making it clear that while he had overlooked certain matters twice before, there would be no third chance. Spears also commented on Tony's expanding family. In response, Tony proudly reflected on his journey, stating it had taken him three years to conquer a monster and claim the coveted title. Spears explained that this is why Brooks deserved a title shot. Tony told Brooks to think for himself. Spears said he never questioned Tony's decisions and expected the same respect in return. He added that his hunger for success would only be satisfied by winning the North American title. Spears told Brooks, that's how you deal with the boss. Then he turned to a driver and asked if that was the right way to do it, and the driver agreed as they all drove away. According to Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the person driving the car with Brooks Jensen and Sean Spears on NXT this week, who wasn't mentioned on TV, is Skylar Clinton, and it is noted that he is now going by the name Nico Vance. We'll have to wait and see how WWE will continue to book Sean Spears and Brooks Jensen's current feud with Tony D'Angelo, as Nico Vance's inclusion has certainly made things interesting. Since 2013, the WWE Performance Center has served as a training ground for WWE talent and a venue for aspiring wrestlers to participate in tryouts. Since late 2020, it's also been the home base for WWE's NXT brand. Recently, the Performance Center welcomed an unexpected visitor, sparking curiosity within the wrestling world. According to Fightful Select, former TNA wrestling president Scott Demore, known for playing a key role in establishing the current partnership between WWE and TNA, visited the WWE Performance Center on Friday, November 8th. During his visit, Demore was given a tour of the facility and engaged in informal conversations. However, the specifics of these discussions remain unknown. In February 2024, TNA Wrestling announced Demore's departure as president, with Anthony Ciccone of Anthem Sports and Entertainment stepping in to fill the role. Following his exit from TNA, Demore revived Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling, an independent promotion that has so far hosted a single two-night event, Forged in Excellence. The event featured talent from AEW, Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, and the independent wrestling circuit. Do you think Demore will eventually join WWE? Sound off in the comments below. Now, Jackie Redman has been a backstage interviewer and correspondent for WWE Monday Night Raw since October 2021. While she had previously announced her absence from the November 11th episode, fans were curious about the reason behind it. During an appearance on Gabby AF, Redman shared the reasoning for her break. She revealed that over the course of her career, she's learned to prioritize her mental health and recognize signs of impending burnout. To avoid this, she now plans her time off strategically. Knowing that her schedule, returning from Saudi Arabia and immediately covering a hockey game, would leave her drained, she decided to take the week off to recharge. Redmond noted that the decision paid off, as she now feels refreshed and in a much better place, which was her ultimate goal. In the demanding world of professional wrestling, taking time off to focus on mental health is essential for long-term success. Fans have expressed their support for Redmond's decision to prioritize her well-being, the good news? Jackie Redmond will be back on Raw for next week's episode, which is what matters most. Do you miss seeing Jackie Redmond on WWE Raw this week? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And we're ending with WWE as this year's SummerSlam delivered a strong performance from start to finish, and during SummerSlam week, WWE also held tryouts. One of the notable participants was Elijah Holyfield, the son of boxing legend Evander Holyfield, who has now officially been confirmed as part of NXT's newest class of recruits. Elijah, with a background in American football, has played in the NFL and at the University of Georgia, showcasing his athleticism in multiple sports before setting his sights on professional wrestling. While it wasn't initially clear whether he had passed the tryouts, WWE NXT's official Twitter account recently shared a photo of their latest recruits, which included Elijah Holyfield. This confirmed that the son of the boxing icon is now on track to become a WWE superstar. The post read, The future is looking bright, a sentiment many fans shared. Lance Anawaii, another recruit, was also spotted, though this was expected after it was previously reported that he had signed with WWE. Now all eyes are on Elijah Holyfield as he embarks on his WWE journey with plenty of potential for what lies ahead.